I'm Ron Paul, a congressman from Texas. I am pleased to be here to debate because this is a very important debate, but I am convinced that needless and unnecessary wars are a great detriment. They undermine our prosperity and our liberties. They add to our deficits and they consume our welfare. We should take a careful look at our foreign policy. Congressman Paul, I suspect you disagree. I do. Tell us why. <laughs> I think... I think the uh, Patriot Act is unpatriotic because it undermines our liberty. I'm concerned, as everybody is, about the terrorist attack. Timothy McVeigh was a vicious terrorist. He was arrested. Terrorism, still on the books, internationally and nationally, is a criminal. It's a crime, and we should deal with it. We dealt with it rather well with Timothy McVeigh. But what I, why I really fear it is we have drifted into a condition that we were warned against because our early founders were very clear. They said, don't be willing to sacrifice liberty for security. Today, it seems too easy that our government and our Congresses are so willing to give up our liberties for our security. I have a personal belief that you never have to give up liberty for security. You can still provide security without sacrificing our Bill of Rights. I want to bring others in, but do you want to respond, Mr. Speaker? Yeah. Timothy McVeigh succeeded. That's the whole point. <laughs> Tim Timothy McVeigh killed a lot of Americans. I don't want a law that says, after we lose a major American city, we're sure going to come and find you. I want a law that says, you try to take out an American city, we're going to stop you. This is like saying that we need a policeman in every house, a camera in every house, because we want to prevent child beating and, ha and wife beating. You can prevent crimes by becoming a police state. So if you advocate the police state, yes, you can have safety and security, and you might prevent a crime, but the crime then will be against the American people and against our freedoms, and we will throw out so much of what our our revolution was fought for. So don't do it so carelessly. Con Congressman Paul. That's digging, a That's digging a hole for ourselves. What if they look like Timothy McVeigh? You know, he was pretty tough criminal. I think we're using too, too much carelessness in the use of words that we're at war. I don't remember voting on, on a, a declare, declaration of war. Oh, war against terrorism. And terrorism is a tactic. It isn't a person. It isn't a people. So th this is a barely careless use of words. What about this? Sacrifice liberties because they're terrorists? You're the judge and the jury? No, they're suspects. And they have changed the, in the in DOD budget, they have changed the wording on the def definition of Al-Qaeda and Taliban. It's anybody associated with organizations, which means almost anybody can be loosely associated. So that makes all Americans vulnerable. And now we know that American citizens are vulnerable to assassination. So I would be very cautious about protecting the rule of law. It will be a sacrifice that you'll be sorry for. Congressman Paul, would you support Israel? Uh, and help Israel in such an attack? No, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> but there'd be good reasons because I don't expect it to happen because, you know, the Mossad leader that just uh, retired said it would be the stupidest thing to do in the world. And it's a big argument over in Israel. They're not about to do this. They've just polled 40 major experts on foreign policy here by the National Journal. Not one of them said there should be a unilateral attack on, on the uh, sites in, in Iran. So that's not going to happen. And if it did, you're supposing that if it did, um, why does Israel need our help? We need to get out of their way. I mean, we interfere with them. We, did, we interfere with them when they deal with their borders, when they want to have peace treaties. We tell them what they can do because we buy their allegiance and they sacrifice their sovereignty to us. And then they decide they want to bomb something. That's their business, but they should, you know, suffer the consequences. When they bombed the uh, Iraqi missile site, uh, nuclear site, back in the 80s, I was one of the few in Congress that said it's none of our business and Israel should take care of themselves. Israel has 200, 300 nuclear missiles and they can take care of themselves. Why should we commit? We don't even have a treaty with Israel. Why, why do we have this automatic commitment that we're going to send our kids and send our money endlessly uh, to, to Israel? 
So I think they're quite capable of taking, themselves, taking care of themselves. I think we do detriment. Just think of all the money we gave to Egypt over 30 or 40 years. Now look, we were buying friendship. Now there's a civil war. They're less friendly to Israel. That whole thing is going to backfire once we go bankrupt and we remove our troops. So I think we should be very cautious in our willingness to go to war and send troops without a proper declaration by the U.S. Congress. Ron Paul. I, I think the uh, aid is all uh, worthless. It doesn't do any good uh, for most of the people. You take money from poor people in this country and you end up giving it to rich people in poor countries. And they're used as weapons of war, so you accomplish nothing. We should export some, maybe some principles about free markets and sound money, and maybe they could produce some of their, their own wealth. But this whole idea of, of talking about the endless wars and the endless foreign aid, it seems like Nobody cares about the budget. I mean, we, we're in big trouble, and, and, and nobody wants to cut anything. So if you're going to keep sending foreign aid overseas and these endless wars that you don't have to declare and, and go into Libya without even consulting with the Congress, uh, the biggest threat, the biggest threat to our national cure, security is our financial condition. And this is just aggravating it. Governor, Governor Romney. Congressman Paul, what they're doing is cutting a trillion dollars out of the defense budget. They're cutting a trillion dollars out of the defense budget, which just happens to equal the trillion dollars they're putting into Obamacare. And so what you have is a president that has a priority of spending us into bankruptcy, but he's not just spending us into bankruptcy, he's spending the money foolishly. We need to protect America and protect our troops and our military and stop the idea of Obamacare. Right. That's the best way to save money, not the military. Right. But, but, but Hold on one second, because Ron Paul wants to respond to that point. Well, they're not cutting anything out of anything. All this talk is just talk. <laughs> Believe me. They're cutting, they're nibbling, they're nibbling away at baseline budgeting, it's automatic increases, there's nothing cut against the military, and the people on the hill are nearly hysterical because they're not going, the budget isn't going up as rapidly as they wanted to. It's a road to disaster, we better wake up. Oh, oh. Congressman Paul, you're from Texas, you agree with uh, your governor? Not entirely. <laughs> no. Uh, the, the drug war was mentioned. I think that's another war we ought to cancel because it is a, to, to nobody's benefit. And that's where the violence is coming from. But yes, we do have a national responsibility for our borders. What I'm sort of tired of is all the money spent and lives lost worrying about the borders between Pakistan and Afghanistan, forgetting about our borders between the United States and Mexico. We should think more about, you know, what we're doing at home. We need better immigration services, obviously. But, you, you know, if you subsidize something or give people incentives, you get more of it. So if you give easy road to citizenship, you're going to have more illegals. If you have a, a weak uh, economy, which is uh, understandable and we should have prevented. Uh, that's understandable. But giving, mandating uh, to the states and to Texas that we have to provide free medical care and free uh, education, that's a great burden. It's a great burden to California and all the border states. So I would say eliminate all these benefits and uh, talk about el eliminating the welfare state because it's detrimental not only to here but the people that come because that's the incentive to bring their families with them. But I just wanted you to clarify, when you say cancel the war on drugs. Does that mean legalize all, all these drugs? I think the federal war on drugs is a total failure. Uh, you, can, uh, you can at least let sick people have marijuana because it's helpful, but compassionate conservatives say, well, we can't do this. We're going to put people who are sick and dying with cancer and they're being helped with marijuana if they have multiple sclerosis. The federal government's going in there and overriding state laws and putting people like that in prison. Why don't we handle the drugs like we had alcohol? Alcohol is a deadly drug. What about the real deadly drugs are the prescription drugs. They kill a lot more people than the illegal drugs. So the drug war is out of control. I fear the drug war because it undermines our civil liberties. It magnifies our problems on the borders. We spend like over the last 40 years a trillion dollars on this war. And believe me, the kids can still get the drugs. It just hasn't worked. I'm Katherine Zimmerman from the American Enterprise Institute's Critical Threats Project. The United States adopted a policy of disengagement with Somalia after its retreat following Black Hawk Down. Today, an Al-Qaeda affiliate, Al-Shabaab, controls significant territory in that country. What can the United States do to prevent Al-Shabaab 
from posing the same threat that Al Qaeda did from Afghanistan 10 years ago. Congressman Paul, you're talking about Al Qaeda, correct? No. You have to understand who the Al Qaeda uh, really is. The, the Al Qaeda responds in a very deliberate fashion. Matter of fact, Paul Wolfowitz explained it very clearly after 9 11. He said that Al Qaeda is inspired um, by the fact that we had bases in Saudi Arabia. So if you want to inspire Al Qaeda, just meddle in, in, in that region. That will inspire the Al Qaeda. Matter of fact, he went on to say that that was a good reason for us to remove the base that we had had in 15 years in, uh, in Saudi Arabia and that we shouldn't have done that. So there is a response. Al Qaeda responds to that and, and they are quite annoyed with it. So if you drop, if you have a no-fly zone over Syria, that's an act of war. Uh, what, what if we uh, had China put a no-fly zone over our territory? I don't think, I don't think we would like that. And I think we should practice a, uh, a, a, a policy of, uh, of goodwill to, to other people. What, what about uh, uh, saying that we don't do anything to any other country that we don't have them do to us? When we had a no-fly zone over Iraq, it was for meant to be regime change, and evidently some want to have regime change. But what is our business? Why, why should we spend more money and more lives to get involved in another war? That's an, that is the internal affairs of right. the other nations, and we don't, want, we don't need another nation to start nation building. We have way too many already. So this is just looking for more trouble. I would say, why don't we mind our own business? During the 2000 presidential debates, Governor George W. Bush was never asked about the threat from al-Qaeda, yet the battle with al-Qaeda dominated his presidency. What national security issue do you worry about that nobody is asking about either here or in any of the debates so far? Congressman. I worry most about overreaction on our part, getting involved in another war when we don't need to, when we haven't been attacked, and our national security has not been at, at threat. And I worry a lot about people never have come around to understanding who the Taliban is and why they are motivated. Taliban doesn't mean they want to come here and kill us. The Taliban means they want to kill us over there because all they want to do is get people who occupy their country out of their country, just like we would if anybody tried to occupy us. Governor